I uh, haven't showered or brushed my hair since my last video, so we're all just going to have to deal with that. Um, I also was up until almost 5 a.m., and it's not even 10 a.m., so we're going to have to deal with that as well. But I wanted to get some time in the morning to just exist. I'm, I had caffeine yesterday is what it is, and I haven't had caffeine. This is the second caffeine I've had in weeks, but um, so it's still got me all like wired and jittery. I woke up. I I was like awake during my dreams the whole night, which is normal for me to be pretty lucid, but not like entirely awake. This time I was awake, uh, kind of just like in that low-level dream state, which is fine. It was good. I can't exactly recall the dreams, to be honest, but I do. Like, they're like right on the forefront of my mind. Um, just not on the tip of my tongue. I just wanted to do a little, a little reading for them. Um, got, a, got a lot on my mind, to be honest. I'm going to take a nap later today and hang out with a friend tonight, which I'm excited about. I haven't seen her for months. I haven't seen her since June. Yeah, since June. So that'll be nice. I feel like I haven't, like, really hung, I haven't, I haven't actually, like, hung out with anybody since then. And even then we were working together. I wanted to be working these couple weeks, um, but never heard from the job. I should probably try to hit them up again and see maybe, maybe they need help for the next little bit. I don't know, because I don't know how long the festival's going on, but, um, that's a whole bunch of random. I have some turmeric detox tea. It's delicious. I've been using agave nectar, which is just as cheap as syrup. I've been using, I was using maple syrup um, for a sweetener. Because um, I learned that when I was in California, and it is actually quite tasty. But, you're the trash person. Um, I forgot to put the trash out. At this point, it's just too late. They've already been coming, so. Um, but yeah, this agave nectar is actually really good. It's organic. Um, and it's very sweet. You don't need too much of it. Um, I use it almost exactly, yeah, I use it the same way that I would use maple syrup. And it's very good. I would recommend it. Um, I don't know if there's a preference for one or the other over the fact that this is much thinner, um, and I'm pretty sure it has a lower sugar content. I think it's a bit healthier in comparison, because I love that maple syrup, but it is very, it's just sugar. It's tree sugar. Um, which is good, by the way. I have this. Natural gemstone. Of natural gemstones. I've got all my gemstones aside from the ones I slept with. Um, but I'm using this to catch the cards. I got it off the internet and it's wonderful and I'm very thankful for it. Um, my only complaint I say to catch the cards and then I throw them on the ground. Uh, my only complaint is that it literally says witchcraft supplies on it, which, like, you practicing different forms of divination, ruminations, uh, different psychic gifts, um, and different forms of pagan arts that way, is not all witchcraft. I know in the Christian realm, they would determine it as witchcraft, because they determine fucking everything as witchcraft, right? But as somebody that gets in touch with my ancestors and tries to practice what my ancestors practiced, 
it's almost offensive. It is offensive because I'm not a witch. Um, I'm a spiritualist. Uh, but I, I, I just practice my gifts. Um, they call it a natural witch, but all of that's just like conservative colonial concepts. And it comes from the same people that came in into my Native American heritage and saw what they were doing and claimed it to be evil. You know what I mean? So it's like, because they're like, oh, you worship the trees and you worship the moon and you worship the dead and all of that's very satanic. And it's like, y'all are satanic. You came in here and robbed us and killed us and genocided the entire populace. Like, this entire land used to be entirely natives. At one point it was just natives. Now it was natives, people who had traveled here from thousands and thousands of years ago, um, to a degree and mixed, you know. We'd all come, we'd all come here from somewhere. Um, but at the same time, I think there were also people seated here and it was kind of a mix of all of those things. But prior to the European uh, travelers, it had been like an entire SAMHSA cycle almost, you know, like an entire like whole world cycle um, since there was any like, or SAMHSA, sorry, cycle um, since there'd been any when the European travelers came, they like did it in a totally different way where they like colonized, right? There hadn't been like a colonization, that sort of way. The tribes all moved around and claimed different land and stuff like that to a degree, but at the same time, they also had this, these pagan concepts that kept them like in balance with the grander universe, which the Europeans just completely did not have. Um, so, you know, like the idea of conquest, sneaking the conquistadors, and like the idea of conquest really fucks shit up. Which is, I suppose, an interesting concept too, because I imagine that those were probably, well, I can't remember for sure. So I'm Black Irish, which were like originally Spanish descent people that are native Irish, but they, they came from Spain originally, um, not from, like, Europe, and, well, that's part of Europe, but, you know, not from, like, Britain, um, area. They weren't white people, they were brown people with dark hair and dark eyes and, you know, dark features, and they were, like, at least what I was told was that they were the ones that, like, weren't part of the conquesting and they weren't part of like but that wouldn't really make sense because they actually did go to Ireland people didn't like them in Ireland um, and then they came here as slaves or not slaves, servants but they were treated worse than slaves often because the slaves had um, not that they were treated worse because slaves were often you know the issue was that slaves had a higher value than servants right? like the Irish came and were like beggars and we're like we'll do anything even the stuff that you're having slaves do and we'll do it for cheaper when like that was still their choice but that's what they did to gain any sort of like movement in this land where like the slaves were like during the slave trade were like high value high price like but they weren't receiving any of those benefits where the servants were actually like considered free people that were able to actually like I mean they were indentured servants they were able to buy their freedom slaves weren't they had to you know it had to take the civil rights movement for them to be able to have any claim to freedom so very different things going on at the same time and also my native heritage like there's a lot of issues when it comes to the slave trade as well because not only were we being genocided but because we were being genocided um, we were also like participating in the slave trade where like we would sell out um, different slaves to white men in order to gain favor with them. So there's a lot of like, despite the fact that I have like these mixed heritages in my blood, there's still this like overarching 
theme of white supremacy. <laughs> and that's why it's something that's always like pretty prevalent on my mind. It's something I work hard to like, you know, I'm not sitting here like whipping myself and having to sacrifice myself for being white. I take responsibility for that in myself and try to work out the karma of those things in order to be a more well-rounded individual. Um, that I believe is what the best I can do is also like to use my influence to affect those that are given to white supremacy. Um, that one I've still struggled with, especially like in spaces where I'm well aware that it's that it's the norm. That was a big thing that kept me from. That's a big thing. It wasn't even the sexism. It was definitely the the white supremacy that kept me from like wanting to go too far in the group that I had become affiliated with in comedy um, because that's kind of how you make it as far as that's concerned you have to sell yourself out or be willing to sell others out um, that way and for me like if it comes naturally from me and is part of my healing great but you're not going to sit here and like force me to well one you're not going to you're not going to sit here and force me to have sex with anybody just because it's going to gain me favor with anybody else or like some sort of status I don't care. My sexuality is worth far more than whatever status you're offering. But I'm also not going to like be forced to cut down any specific race or my own mix of race in order to uh, validate white supremacy. That's insane. If that's what it takes in order to be supreme, if what it takes in order to be in control and be in power is having to step on the backs of everybody else and force everybody else into submission, got news for you buddy you ain't that powerful you might think you're powerful because you're in control right because you have these manip because you have a, a high manipulation that's able to bring everybody into submission to your own but you you can't you when you're not actually doing that that's a complete illusion people are giving you your power people are by giving you their power right so the second people take that power back, it's not your power anymore. It never was your power. You can barely survive in the sun. That's something I offended my roommate the other day by saying that, but like, it's true. It's not true of every white person. There's a um, natural, fair-haired, fair-eyed people that also have melanin, like they're melanated, like they actually have it in them there's a lot of white folks that don't and uh, they don't like the consideration that they need others to survive when like that was only even an issue for those people that can't survive in the sun everybody else seemed to have a pretty strong culture about being able to work with each other in order to like I don't even care if you're my enemy on certain grounds we still work together as a whole for the sake of our human race and then these they're mutated people. There's people that have mutated genes that like can't survive, barely survive on their own, and they were often ostracized in society, you know, and so in order to protect themselves and survive themselves, they learned how to control others and how to use others and how to manipulate others. And I get that that's just like, I mean, it's the same thing as like those para it's like a parasite, right? Like parasites are just doing what they gotta do to survive. They're not evil evil doesn't actually exist they're they're just doing what they got to do but i don't have a problem with the eradication of certain parasites either now i think there's a point where the concept of eradication like you have to be cautious to not try to become too controlling because i do also believe that everything is necessary to a degree in in the ecosystem and is part of the balance and that like I really think that like protecting your own is one thing but like genociding outside of that is something else and so I think that like if you have an infestation great take care of it because that's you protecting yourself but like if you then go out and are like killing those things in their own space like that's a step over the line right and if those things are like infesting but really, like, there's just a high populace of them when they're actively working for the betterment of the whole. That's not an infestation. 
there's many viruses and like parasites and stuff that end up like doing doing good ultimately those things like bacteria and stuff like the way the world works naturally without our interference actually everything works out for good always everything comes back around and works out for good even when it clears out whole whole spaces you know like fire uh forest fires they benefit the redwoods in california so like as crazy and devastating as it is when it's all said and done there's enough carbon for a very strong regrowth of redwoods we just have to stop interfering so that nature can do what it does okay that's something i need to reflect on because obviously there's these conflicting aspects in my dna all these thoughts of having to protect oneself by controlling means and the capacity to just let go of that and just let nature be and to be one with it. You know, I think it's innate in humanity to a degree to have like these this conflict because even in untouched tribes that have existed the same way for thousands of years they still wage war between other tribes um, often these tribes like when they go and get researched which is a whole other subject we need to quit interfering but like when they go and get researched they'll find that like they're engaging in like incest and cannibalism which is like not part of our civilized culture says the British who are constantly incesting everything but I digress um, but uh you know so it's not like there isn't this inherent uh, desire for conquest within us but again it comes from survival which is the natural form of things and like with the progressions that we have come to like I don't think that we went back to ourselves in time to give ourselves the knowledge that we have for to build civilization so that we could just destroy ourselves the point is for us to quit using it to our own destruction to use it to overcome that natural proclivity and desire for control and for conquest in order to create a, a um, it's like an, an actual efficient, sustainable system. We give that credit to aliens or to like the ancient gods. You know, that's where like all the ancient, what all the ancient religions say. But in my belief, that's us in the future coming back to us in time to try to save ourselves because we realize that we keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, you know? Um, I have in my own dream states, like been able to do that and go back in time and been able to heal myself. And I have like had this crazy deja vu sort of feeling where like, actually remembered at 15, 16, 17, being in my parents' basement and like, seeing these interdimensional beings from the time that I was like 13 I used to, and I didn't know if it was ghosts I don't know what it was and for a while I thought it was aliens I didn't know what was, what was going on and I really mostly just thought that I was crazy um, I didn't know what it was and I didn't know why I was having these interactions that were like making me feel all kinds of ways and giving me all this different weird information and like driving me to like study certain things and Again, my family said that it was all demonic, um, and I've recently been lucid enough in my dreams and become aware of where I am at in time and space to realize that, like, at least multiple times, that's been me going back to my former self in order to guide myself to where I am now. And, like, being able to recognize myself back then where, like, I was the shadow people that I was seeing. I was I was these interdimensional ghosts. And like this movie, Interstellar, y'all need to watch it because I say it like all the time. I'm constantly bringing it into conversations, but for real, it just, it hits all of these concepts so perfectly. That movie really blew my mind. And I would have not normally watched it. I was not excited, enthused to watch it because it's Matthew McConaughey and like, 
just not the biggest fan necessarily. He's been good in every movie I've seen him in. I just like there's something about him that I don't like or I don't want to like. So it wasn't like I was like, oh, a Matthew McConaughey movie. Let me get on that. What I liked about it was that it was sci-fi. And obviously since it's somebody so big, you can know that it's like well produced to at least some degree. And it's fucking brilliant. It's so good. It hits on all these different time space theories. I love it so much and you should watch it because I bring it up a lot. Um, okay, so that's weird. I never know what I'm going to be talking about until I start these videos and I just start talking and this is the stuff that comes out. spread rather in the center the first card that I pulled was the hanged man in the upright he is surrounded left to right from by the eight of wands in the upright the five of pentacles in the reverse the four of wands in the upright the king of swords in the reverse the knight of swords in the reverse the ten of wands in reverse the Eight of Swords in the Upright, and the Page of Wands in the Reverse. Okay, so he came out in the Upright. Yet right next to him is two cards with people in the Reverse, um, single people in the Reverse, and uh, they're, they're the same person. The same person. It's a... Okay, so with the hangman being upright, it's he's hanging upside down because he's trying to see things from another perspective. So it's not about, so these reversals aren't um, in the negative. They're about looking at it in a different perspective. Okay. The page of wands in reverse. I would normally take as a missed opportunity. It's like the fear of a missed opportunity. Um, it's An assurance of self and um, the first step forward in energetic growth in the reverse it almost feels like like wait on this like these things will will come but right now it's not the time so right now it's not the time to be taking a step towards energetic growth it's more a time to rest and, and that's what the King of Swords is. It's like more of a time to rest in what is known. Um, which is hard. It's very addicting to, almost to um, keep... Yeah, that's part of the conquest, isn't it? To keep learning more and knowing more and being able to apply more and grow and grow and do more. I've been like anxious 
like finding myself like anxiously being like, okay, I need to get to work. I need to be making money because I fear what those around me are thinking for the fact that I'm not currently working. But like those around me didn't just work for two months straight without a break. Um, so they can get fucked. Really, like I have to tell myself that because like I don't need somebody else's permission to take a break. I don't need somebody else's permission like in my job. Yeah, that's because I've dedicated myself to my work. You know what I mean? So like I take my job seriously and if I have a job to do, then I do it and I do it uh, 120%. I do it as hard as I can. Like I take it seriously because I'm aware that like there's times for work and there's times for release. Um, you know, and I've been incorporating how to enjoy myself in that more and more and how to learn how to enjoy my work, and I do. Um, but, like, I, I also hold out for, you know, anything can wait until the break is given, that sort of way. Um, and so even in this, like, right now I'm in a break period. But it's like, I don't have to anxiously, like, look for what I have to do next. I need to just be able to enjoy the break in this space. I don't constantly need to be productive. I mean, creative is different, right? Creativity and productivity. What an interesting concept that, at least in my head, they tend to become one another. Creativity tends to become productivity. Um, and I use that, you know, as validation for having used my creative outlets, but like, ultimately, like, I'm just thinking we're like, being productive isn't like, okay, I need to do some art so that I feel like I've done something of value so I can say this is what I did today. I don't care about the external validation. I do, but I don't need to. And I release that. It doesn't matter if other people think I'm being productive. Unless it's my boss, unless it's somebody that's paying me. If it's somebody that's paying me, I care that I'm productive. I care that I'm reaching my efficiencies um, because I get to choose what work I do. But when it comes to my day-to-day -day life, I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to worry about being productive. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't need to worry about what anybody else thinks. They have their own lives. If they want to do whatever they want to do, they're free to do it. Um, period. I worked very hard for this freedom. I worked very hard to be able to release those things. I worked very hard to be where I'm at, and I deserve to be at peace. Um, so yeah, I don't need any validation for those things. The Eight of Wands is moving into the Five of Pentacles in reverse. The Five of Pentacles in reverse is generally, to me, a concept of poverty, uh, a physical poverty, um, monetary poverty unstableness, um, ungroundedness, uh, lack of hope, um, a lack of support, those types of feelings. Um, to be in the reverse is, and like with the Eight of Wands uh, being directed into it, it's kind of like you recognize the tools that you have at hand to keep yourself out of those senses of lack. This was the same thing my last reading about was lack mentality. Um, and so I guess this is going a little deeper in that way. But like, what keeps you out of poverty? What keeps you out of those things? Like right now, I don't have any responsibility outside of to myself. The thing that's going to keep me in that state of abundance and freedom isn't putting on a sense of responsibility that I need to rush and figure it out and make sure that I have something socially validated as acceptable, like, going on in my life. I don't need social acceptance that way. Society will receive what it is given and make use of it however it can. And I want to ensure that what I'm putting out is genuine and coming from the right space of alignment within myself. And I can't offer that if I'm forcing all of these concepts onto myself, especially these lack mentalities. 
So releasing that, releasing that. You're, you're hitting that with all of your wands. I have all of these tools, I'm good. Um, and that moves into the four of wands in the upright, which is always such a weird card to me because all four of wands are standing upright with like no support. No support, they're just freestanding. And it's funny because like there's, you could probably actually do that, really. There's um, a banner of, like a wreath, a banner wreath in between the two furthest poles. And I imagine if you, if you were to balance that and then put the other two, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've always found it such an interesting card because they're freestanding, but it's such a positive card when you look at it. Like, there are these two people celebrating in the back with their flowers up in the air, you know, and, um, there's just a sense of, like, reward, a sense of celebration, um, that you did it and that you can stand on your own, you know, and that, like, understanding, like, the forces at work is how you do those things. Like, if you understand physics, which isn't something that's, like, laid out aside from how people have laid it out for us but like it's just a law of nature when you understand the laws of nature the sacred geometry behind things like there is a symbol for the sacred geometry there is a way to symbolize those things for our measurement and like processing but truly those things are still just innate laws they're actually invisible not illusionary but invisible. Um, when you understand the invisible things, then you can manifest the visible, truly. You know, so that's a big part of it too, because like if I were truly in poverty, like in the five uh, pentacles, in this card, in the upright, there's these two poor people that, you know, have no shoes, and they're walking through the snow, and they have canes, and they're raggedy clothes, and they're right outside of a very fancy church that is boasting about the money it has essentially these nice carved walls and these pentacles on its stained glass um, but that's all just representative of a lack mentality and when you you know our survival is to conquest but it's what are we conquesting what are we what are we trying to control are we trying to control and it's not even trying to control stepping into alignment with what is to be controlled truly and what like is actually within your control doesn't look like forcing through things and then like fitting into it it looks like knowing yourself so that you can properly like it's like reality is coming at you and you just have to like move into the spaces where you can actually do those things there's games like that that i actually just saw online um like little phone games or something, but like where like everything's kind of moving at you and you just move your character back and forth. Like you're able to shoot, you're able to like use different powers yourself, but like you're essentially always stationary and just able to kind of move back and forth within this constantly moving path and there's things coming at you on your path and you have to determine like what stuff is stuff you want, what stuff is stuff you don't, how to add to it before it gets to you so that it's better for you or like the best thing for you or how to like get rid of it before it gets to you so that you can protect yourself against it that is a great depiction of how life works really and like yeah we're not truly in control you know so like the sense of conquest and what is it that we're actively trying to control like it just takes knowing yourself so that you can realize all the things you're not in control of so you can just let those things go and then suddenly what's revealed underneath all of that is what you are in control of you know when you let go of all of the external that you can't control and all the chaos that you can't control all of a sudden like what comes what what you really find on the inside is that like i can force myself to breathe but there's also an involuntariness to it all of the organs in my body are working involuntarily my skin my like endocrine system like all of that stuff is working involuntarily um, even the stuff that works voluntarily like also works like subconsciously and so again it's like the invisible that really controls everything um, not the lack mentality and if you can release those things to kind of look 
underneath that surface, you'll find, well, you'll find nothing. And that's the power. That's the power. There's this song that I really enjoy that's like, a, kind of like a pop punk song um, called Wolfman by the Front Bottoms. And at the end of it, well, like the song is like, taught, like you try to teach me nothing and like the importance of nothing. And it's like, nothing matters, the importance of nothing, the importance of nothing, nothing matters, the importance of nothing, nothing matters. The importance of nothing, nothing matters, the importance of nothing. Um, there's so many different nuances to what that means, but like it's so powerful to me because it's true. Um, nothing is what materializes, like truly, like nothing. Like that's where like all of these voids and lack mentalities and stuff exists is because we're well aware of our capacity to manifest nothingness. Um, at the same time, manifesting it like, we don't have to manifest nothing. We have to embrace nothing, and then everything else manifests. Because nothing really matters. And when we're trying to force through manifestation what it is that we want, it becomes nothing. But when we release and embrace nothing, we are free to receive it all. The Four of Wands moves into the Knight of Swords in reverse. Again, releasing nothing, releasing control, releasing what we know, releasing um, what we've determined is gonna get us from point A to point B, and just being willing to receive. The Knight of Swords uh, is forward motion with what we know. It's like being able to like, Yeah, not even move forward, but being able to release. Being able to release moves into the Ten of Wands in reverse. The Ten of Wands in the upright is uh, like determinative of like um, overwhelming feelings of struggle, of compromise, of um, burden of responsibility in the reverse in this spread it is reminiscent of embracing nothing embracing nothing not you know worrying about what it is not not being burdened not having to control those things, but being able to just um, receive, being able just to receive or to not have to receive at all. When you embrace nothing like you've already received. And in that is also its own space. Right? Like, I don't have to sit here and be like, okay, I need this time of peace and rest so that I can be productive, so that I can receive what it is, the abundance of the universe. Like, this is the thing that's going to gain me abundance. That's not the right mindset. The Tao teaches much ado of nothing in order that you become filled with nothing so that you are full and so that you don't require a thing in order to be such. And that the sage and high virtue don't request anything of anything. They simply exist because they are. Um, they don't need to be validated externally. You know, so there isn't this fear of burden or responsibility. There isn't a struggle to carry everything because there's nothing at all. The Eight of Swords in the upright, it's like it's not that there isn't work to be do, to be done, but allowing yourself to be blinded and to be bound in this way by embracing nothing, you actually find that you, the rest of your senses are heightened. And again, it's the invisible 
that is actually the power of all things. Not the illusionary, but the invisible. The illusionary is what would uh, project itself to be something when truly nothing exists. The invisible is the core essence of nothingness. Embracing that, you know, if you were in fear, if by the time you moved through these things you were in fear, by the time that you have bound yourself and blinded yourself, you won't move through those swords with ease. Um, you'll be terrified of them. But when you are able to embrace nothing, it's like none of it bothers you. It's just another opportunity to be at peace, to be at rest. It's like the song Moon Shadow. Um, by Cat Stevens, where he's like, if I ever lose my legs, I won't have to walk no more. And if I ever lose my mouth, I won't have to talk no more. And if I ever lose my hands, I won't have to work no more. You know, and like, the blessing of those things. And just like, the blessing of the mindset. And it's all about mindset. Right? It's all about mindset, which is, obviously, the hangman in the upright. That is the concept, is that it's all about mindset. He puts himself, hangs himself upside down to see the world from new perspectives in order to gain a clearer mind. And that's why he has a halo around his head and the sun coming out, is because he is coming to clarity of mind by putting himself in the reverse. And that's the importance of it. You will always see things in a negative light, when you have a lack mentality, when you're looking for what isn't there, when you're looking for what you can't, what you, what you can control, what you don't control, when you're looking for anything at all, you will always find something. And when there isn't, when your heart isn't filled with gratitude, you'll always find something to not be thankful for my tea this morning. My, I have two detox turmeric teas and then I have a, a turmeric ta, uh, chai tea. Oh, there's a cardinal. I have a turmeric chai tea, uh, just for a little added flavor. And it's Yogi, I think is the name of the brand of the tea, and they have little, um, little fortunes on the tags. And this one this morning said, without gratitude, there is no prosperity. Without gratitude, there is no prosperity. Because you could have it all. Just like the reading I had yesterday with the Sin Eaters. You could have it all. All the money, all the cars, all the benefits of being wealthy. All the attention, all the power. All that control over your reality so that at any point in time you could do anything you wanted. And if you don't have gratitude in your heart, all you will see is the sins of everything that's brought you to that point. All you will see is the things that you still don't have. All you will see is that the, the control you can't have. Because nobody can control it all. There's the invisible is what is, what, what, dictates everything, right? There's laws at work that we are subjected to until you are in the non-physical. You can't possibly be in alignment with those things. And there is no sense of control over those things, only in alignment with those things. You don't actually control anything. So as long as you're in the physical, focused on the physical, without gratitude in your heart, trying to control things with all the power and wealth that you have. You have a lack mentality that is controlling you. And you will feel possessed by it because you are. When you embrace nothingness, and again, that was like I mentioned it in my, in my last reading, like when I was living on the street with no food, no money, no friends or family, no roof over my head, like no protection from the elements. And I had truly nothing. I still was finding things to give away. Because I realized that in my concepts of nothingness, 
I mean, I just kept getting things taken away more and more. Life just kept taking everything away to the point where it was like, oh, I get it. I'm nothing. I don't actually own any of this. All of it's been given to me and all of it can be taken away. And, you know, that's the blessing of it. Because nothing really matters. And that's what I can be so grateful for. It's because that gives me the freedom to make of things exactly what I could want of anything, really. Like, that's the creativity. I don't have to be productive. I can just be free to create whatever because there isn't this responsibility hanging over my head of what it is I'm supposed to create. That's the power of manifestation is that, like, and that's why I think witchcraft is so stupid, bringing it back to the thing about witchcraft. Witchcraft, to me, is practicing the dark arts. That's when people are lighting candles with bad intentions, with controlling selfish intentions, when people are scrying into black mirrors with selfish intentions so that they can spy on others and control others and manipulate others, when people are committing sacrifices of, you know, they're burning incense with bad intentions, without gratitude in their hearts, with a sense of control, they're killing animals or people with a sense of control of you know, greed, of self-benefit, of these are the things I need to do in order to gain access to a certain knowledge, or, you know, and that knowledge is what's going to gain me access to a certain power, and that power is what's going to gain me access to a certain abundance. That is not how things work. That is not how things work, and thankfully, the wheel of samsara is turned to a degree where those things are just hitting a wall. They're finally hitting a wall. Um... That, that colonial concept of conquest has benefited those that were given to it on an extremely surface level. And for a long time, people that were only given to surface matters have found themselves benefited by it. But we no longer live in a surface world. The underworld has come up and all of these things are in plain view. Nothing is hidden anymore. The occult isn't the occult anymore. Everybody already knows. It's so wild because when I was like, you know, six, seven, eight, and first started learning occult concepts and first started like getting into very deep occult concepts, like understanding through my brother and stuff, nobody knew what the fuck we were talking about and everybody thought that we were crazy and we kept those things to ourselves and we would communicate those things between the two of us and I would just keep those things even to myself and when I was, you know, 11, 12, 13 and first started experiencing, like, the other side and being in tuned with it, like, I didn't talk about it to other people and when I talked about it to my family, they treated me like I was crazy. By the time I was 18, 19, 20, and started actually seeing these things manifest in reality, I kept was telling people, like, there's shit going on in the skies. There's things going on in the world. Like, there's these changes that are happening. People are like, you're fucking crazy. Everybody thought that I was crazy. Everybody thought that I was crazy. Everybody always thought that I was on drugs. But look at where we're at now. I can prove that I'm not on drugs. I can prove that I'm not crazy. Most of the people that I know are on drugs and are losing their minds. They struggle with depression. They struggle with anxiety. They struggle with psychotic episodes. They struggle with all of these control issues. I'm not in that space anymore. Everything has come around to where I am completely comfortable. I can be at peace. I don't even have to worry about trying to get a job right now. I really don't. I really don't. What the universe is telling me is just to wait, to sit, to be patient, to hold on to what I know, to focus on what I have, to be grateful for those things, to let those things speak for themselves, to let the power of those deep aspects come out to manifest for myself so that I don't actually have to do the work. I have to follow the work that's already done and fall into alignment with what's already been preset for me. It is my destiny. If I can trust that it's my destiny, I can trust that it's already preset and that all I have to do is come into alignment with it. If you want to convince yourself that your destiny is something less than your greatest good, that's on you, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay? And if you look at the laws of nature, you will see that what's within everything's destiny is for the greatest good. And if you are in an alignment with the greatest good, with the greatest good, then all of it falls into place that way. 
You know, if all of this work in my personal life has been done just so that some crazy person can come kill me, so be it. So be it. Because I've already received the abundance, the abundance of the universe. I'm already in alignment with it. I'm not afraid of what's going to happen to me after I die. I'm not afraid of what's going to happen to me in my active world. Nothing matters. Nothing. The manif nothing it matters. It materializes. Embracing nothing is how you give yourself the space to receive. Embracing nothing is also how you fill yourself to a full sense of fulfillment where you don't need anything outside of yourself. Embracing nothing is how you clear a uh, lack mentality, is how you clear pride, is how you clear the anxiety and rush to be productive. It's how you clear the fear of I don't know what I'm doing, the uncertainties of I don't know if I'm capable. How you clear, am I missing opportunities? I don't know what opportunities to take. Embrace nothing. There is much ado about nothing. That's a good one. This stuff is so fun for me. Okay, I hope you have a good day.